I'm Dale Gibson and welcome to Entertainment Spectrum. We've got a special treat tonight and we're going to start right off with a music video called Ladder of, of Rock, the music and lyrics by Rick Hargrave and it's put together by Video Productions, primarily by BK Casebolt. And let's go right into the video right now.
And that was Ladder of Rock, uh, music and lyrics by Rick Hargrave, video production by B.K. Casebolt. And speaking of Mr. Casebolt, I have him sitting here to my far right, uh, Buford Casebolt, and right next to him is uh, old Thomas Mount. Now, you both are... I guess you're still a member of the band, whatever your band is called. Uh, you just changed names re recently, is this correct? That's right. We're, we're really called Broken Toys is the name of our band, but we are produced by Prison Productions, which is our production company. Uh, within the realm of these types of productions, they include the video production, the one that was just seen, Ladder of Rock, was produced by Prison Productions and myself mm -hmm. as a producer and director. Uh, we attempt, we are attempting to produce more music. In fact, we have several things coming out very soon, and hopefully 45 RPM sometime in October. Oh, that's great. And uh, just uh, as a matter of interest uh, for the uh, listeners, uh, oh, uh, this gentleman here is, plays the uh, introductory music when we start the show up, so I, what would you call it? The fanfare. Fanfare, okay. Yeah, that's a good name for it. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, Tom, uh, I guess you go with Tom. Uh, do you, are you involved in the production of it, or are you, are you just strictly in the, the playing end of it? So far, just the playing. I'm just playing a new it. member, so. Oh, well. So far, it's I, just the playing, but I hope to. I know how these things go sometimes, so probably sooner or later you'll be a jack-of-all-trades of it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, now, uh, Buford, you're a, I guess you would call you a, a graduate of American Cable Vision. You've been around yes. this place for a long time, haven't you? Yes, yes indeed. How long uh, did you work here before you kind of got out on your own? Well, I started uh, with American Cable Vision as a volunteer and uh, became more and more involved and was able to take the internship uh, class, which was absolutely, I can't tell you how valuable and what a wonderful thing that was to be able to come in and be trained in the way that we were able to be trained and do the things that we were able to do. Uh, many, I was able to work on several shows during the time, and just now I'm trying to incorporate music more into the video aspects of it. Okay, give me a, an idea. I have, would have no idea how to go about producing a music video. What's involved? There are several ways to do it. Uh, one way that you currently see on television is the lip sync, lip -sync method, mm -hmm. in which a production music copy is used and the musicians or actors or actresses then lip sync uh, the lyrics and even play sync the instruments. The other method is uh, actually a live performance type video. Okay, uh, I would, to me now the lip sync would be the hardest. But uh, I suppose if you want the, the music produced a certain way, to sound a certain way, you'd want that studio quality. So. Uh I guess that's the reason for the lip sync, is that correct? Well, I think so, and uh, not only that, but the motion picture industry has used that technique for years and years, uh, and it's a tried and true method uh, to work from quality audio or consistent audio and then produce video or film uh, from the, the audio. I think it's easier uh, because it's extremely difficult to edit a live performance yes. from other portions of, live, of the same live performance because it's not exactly the same. Uh, the only, my only involvement in a Oh, uh, video, uh, rock videos, for instance, is uh, I was having to be in one with uh, oh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And now I was on, in a segment that had no, uh, there was background music, obviously, but there was no sync, uh, singing or lip syncing or anything. Right. But uh, in that particular production, a lot of it was a live concert. Yes. But they switched from the concert to the, oh, the oh, other part of the production and then back to the concert, so I suppose that'd be a little bit easier where there was no lip sync in, uh, involved. Well, the methodology that they have is, is really tremendous uh, when you work with budgets like that, hundreds of thousands of dollars for empty lock equipment and oh gosh, you could, it's, it's really awesome, some of the things that are possible. He had an entourage that you wouldn't believe. Uh, he had a security force that uh, uh, oh, I'm would, sure. <laughs> would probably take on the Kansas City Chiefs and stomp them. So, uh, but then uh, Ozzy Osbourne's rather a strange individual too. So, well, uh, perhaps. He's interesting, but uh, <laughs> uh, are you? Uh, do you have any other uh, oh, productions in the works that you're going you're coming up with? Well, as I said before, we have a 45 RPM uh, record as a demonstrator of, and this will be under uh, Prison Productions the band name will be Broken Toys. And we most likely will have a video or something to back this up in video so that we can promote it locally. Are you producing your own record? Are you having somebody yes, else produce it? Yes, we will produce our own record. 
Okay, all right, is that being done locally, or are you going someplace else to uh, record the... The recording the itself is done locally in our own studio, uh, but the actual cutting and pressing will be done, I believe, in California. Is that right? Uh, or you just contract with a company to... Uh, uh, once you have them, you've made the master to, to do the uh, press and everything? Right. Most people uh, uh, don't realize how records are made. There's either, are you, do you just make one master, or are you gonna make, do you make more than one? Well, I don't really, I really can't say for sure. I'm sure there would be a test pressing that would re, we would receive back to analyze before we say go ahead and print a thousand. Yeah, because I know uh, you can only print or press so many records off of a master, then they have to, then it starts to become uh, all uh, blurred, so to speak. I would certainly say this is a limited production, so <laughs> I'm, uh, well, first you anyway, you know. You don't know. know. Let's do that. Look at uh, oh, Richie Valens, his first uh, one he came up with uh, made a hit. Of course, this was few years ago, maybe I'm dating myself, but you know, I was a teenager when system he, uh, is the same. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so many of the things are going now to uh, oh, uh, the disc, compact disc. Yes. Do you think that's the thing of the future? It's a compact disc <clears throat> has advantages that outweigh uh, an LP. They're, they're almost impossible to describe. The quantum leap in audio technology for home use is unbelievable with it. Uh, it has the potential of being low cost. Uh, it, there's no wear, no static discharge, uh, no distortion, no wow and flutter. All of the advantages of the highest quality recording can now be uh, afforded in the home. So in other words, uh, well, of course, tapes, they wear out the stress, they get hot or whatever, uh, and records get scratched. Uh, so really, they would last indefinitely then. Uh, Perhaps. Uh, uh, at least we haven't come up with it. If they just get the cost down, I can't afford to buy them, quite frankly. I can't either. <laughs> uh, it doesn't cost that much to make them, I would think. Uh, there'd be no more involved in that making those, I would think, than uh, making a regular 45 RPM. Well, in, in theory, that's true. But in, in actual practice, a compact disc has to be manufactured in a dust three room, which is very yeah. costly yeah. to, to uh, maintain, whereas an LP is stamped in under more or less industrial conditions. Yes, yeah, so I've, seen, I've seen Columbia Records uh, stamping plant out in Los Angeles, right. and uh, <clears throat> it's... Uh, about as clean as Armco Steel is oh, out here. Okay. Is, and uh, if the record doesn't do right, they throw it back in the band, they melt it down, they reuse it. So. Kind of like a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be surprised. You know, it's so strange to me, the first time I saw them, that the records come out square, and then they're cut round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in fact, in some cases in production runs, they come out literally floppy, and they set them out to cool. Yeah. Yeah, they, of course, that uh, it's all little beads that they melt down to press the records. So. Right. We're going to... Uh, uh, cut away from the talk part of it now and uh, these two gentlemen are going to give us a, a live rendition of what are you going to play? Fanfare? Fanfare. So if you will uh, cut away while these uh, two gentlemen get set up and uh, we'll listen to the full rendition of our opening uh, music.
And that was Fanfare, the title music for this show, which, by the way, was written by Buford uh, Casebolt, which I forgot to mention uh, earlier. Uh, I like the music, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did uh, you write both the music, or is there any lyrics to go with it? No, not with this. This is instrumental. Okay, are you, a, do you write lyrics as well as music? Yes. You know, some people do one or the other, but they can't do both. That, uh, it really fascinates me. I I have do not have an ear for music, so I, and I can't read music, so I could never write a note. I I could call it follow them on the scale, but that's about it. Uh, we was talking in the break there about uh, the techniques of uh, recording. Tell me a little bit about multitracking. Uh, is that what it's called? Multi Multitrack recording. Um, it's fabulous. My gosh, every one of the very best recordings that you hear today and probably even stretching back into the 40s was done on a multi-track tape recorder. And it makes possible uh, multiple tracks even if it, there is just one musician. One musician can do the whole show. Obviously you can't perform this way, but it does allow for accurate playing. You are able to hear existing tracks and add a track, basically record while playing back, more or less. Wasn't uh, Les Paul, wasn't he instrumental in starting this? So you know who I'm talking about. Yes. You know, the, he was as much of an electronic uh, genius as he was a guitarist, too, and I heard that he started the multi-track. Uh, that's true, but it, stretch, it stretches back, I think, into the motion picture industry where they needed some way to link tape to film uh, in the early years, and they developed a process that we use even to this day, which is called the simply locking system. But in this way, they can lip sync on uh, certain uh, portions of dialogue or music can be placed on at different tracks, and this, can, of course, can be mixed down later in the appropriate ways. Uh, the way we do our productions, uh, we start with an ideal as part of the writing process. Uh, sometimes we'll collaborate ideas or mm -hmm. we'll just come up with something on our own. Uh, we present this to the other musicians and attempt to, to uh, produce what we call pilot track, which is what the other musicians work from. And then uh, eventually as the percussion uh, portions are placed in, and then the other parts of the, the, the harmony, uh, the other uh, string portions, uh, maybe a piano portions, the guitar portions, and then we get to the lead vocal portion, then backup vocal portions, and then after this is hopefully all accomplished without error, uh, we then go back through and, and uh, can remix it to suit the particular taste or what we're trying to do. In this case, uh, produce a 45 RPM record. Uh, I was lucky in the, that I saw uh, Glenn Campbell record part of a, an album out in Los Angeles. As far as I'd never been in this business before, and I, the m different musicians would come in at the studios at different times to play whatever their part was. They were never there all at the same time. And then Glenn Campbell comes in and sings when everything else is done. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was really strange. You know, I thought I was going to see a big orchestra here or something. And uh, but no, the drummer come in, that is thing. Then the guitarist and so on and so forth. They all listen to that pilot uh, soundtrack. Exactly. As you said. And as a matter of fact, a lot of your uh, best recordings are done in many different locations, and they take the master tape and adjust the other machine to the, the specifications of the uh -huh. first machine and then they record other tracks let's say in someone else's hometown i suppose that uh, i never thought about it but if you know you have two artists that are going to record together and their uh itineraries don't match they could record them in two different separate times and then somebody else can mix them together they very often do that yeah so tom we kind of ignored you uh and not purposely. Yeah. Uh, Happens all get, the time. Get into your background a little bit. Now I understand you're a virtuoso uh, guitarist. That's what uh, yeah, well, that's, Buford that's what says. They, yeah, that's what he says. Okay, what is your background? If you, I assume that you've played for other bands, or uh, yes. uh, how long have you been playing guitar? About half my life. Okay, well now I, I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but uh, uh, now you play strictly the electric. Do you ever get into the acoustical or? Uh, when I, first, do. when I first started playing, yes. It probably, started on acoustic. Probably that's what everybody starts on, is the old the thumb. Well, you'd be surprised, you know, nowadays with the, the, the kids, they, they go right for the electric guitar and they just want to be Loud. all over the place. and <laughs> Ram just, jam. Yeah. Right. And now, uh, I've seen uh, rock videos or various musical videos that there's some guitars that they play that are really strange looking, two and three necks, and I, <laughs> I don't really understand this. Uh, are they tuned? I assume everyone's tuned different, or they tune different octaves or, octaves or something, or? Uh... But it depends on the guitar. They could be not usually tuned in different octaves, but you could have, if it's a six neck and a 12 neck, string neck, it could be, they could be tuned to an open chord, 
They, there's a lot of different variations, okay, but usually you, not octaves, unless yeah, it's a bass well, and a guitar. Yeah, it, it, you know. Octave is the word to come to mind. Yeah. But, uh, now, with there's a twelve or a six, yeah, twelve string guitar. Now, aren't the the strings uh, tuned uh, two different octaves? The uh, first three strings are the same. Oh, are they? They're identical, and then from there, there's octaves. That shows how much I know about guitars. Actually, more than one. There's like two. I octaves. can plunk on one, but that's what it sounds like, plunk. <laughs> but uh, you see all these different uh, oh, uh, type of guitars, and I wonder, if, is there that there's so many different designs? I don't. Is that personal preference, or, or do they sound better because they're designed different, or something? Or they're both. Both. Showmanship, yeah. maybe a little. Yeah, yeah I suppose but the so. Design does play a part in sound too. Yeah, so I see wood. That. There's I've seen an instrument play that I haven't the slightest idea what you call it. It looks like it's fingered like a guitar, but it's got a keyboard, sort of like a, uh, well, like your uh, uh, piano. What's that called? Okay. They're MIDI, con MIDI controllers. MIDI is a Japanese computer language that allows synthesizers like the one that uh, I played just, just moments ago to communicate to another uh, synthesizer, perhaps not one of the same manufacturer. But it's a standard computer language, kind of like in the way that computer modems can talk to one another in different cities. Uh, it's possible to run computer information into that synthesizer from several other ones. Uh, for instance, you mentioned this controller device. Actually, what it is is it's a keyboard that generates MIDI information, which could then be run into any MIDI acceptable uh, uh, synthesizer, and you can play it while standing up or holding it, sort of like a guitar, I guess. Well, it does. I've never heard one played by itself, so can you get any kind of sound out of it like you can the electronic keyboards or Well, you get the same sounds. It's basically just a replacement for the keyboard portion. The, the guts, the electronics, the, the uh, oscillators, the synthesizing portion is still in the synthesizer. It's nothing more than a remote control keyboard device. Just okay, for portability, so I, you can be mobile. Yeah, right, so you can get out and jump Besides, it looks like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, I could, that's the first time I saw that. I couldn't imagine what that thing was, and jeez, uh, you know, Things are sure changing. I'm getting That's old. What we said. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, now your the I call yours a, a, le a electronic piano, but actually it's a synthesizer. It's a synthesizer, programmable uh, synthesizer. Because you, you can program in other sounds, I assume. That, oh yes. Uh, uh, that would be interesting. Uh, a friend of mine uh, does that, and he's it's interesting how some of the sounds he's come up with. That I won't get into how he made some of the sounds he he wanted, but uh, it's rather. Uh, Strange, especially when you start playing them over each other in different octaves yes. and so forth. Electronics have changed the whole outlook of popular music. You know, some time ago I read an article about uh, where uh, computers might start writing music. Do you think this is possible, where computers could write music to where people would like it? Well, I think it would depend on what you told the computer to do. Yeah, of course, garbage um, in, garbage out. It's all in the program, <laughs> you know, but, but they have computer programs now that are music assisting in their writing capability. In other words, the same MIDI interface that I mentioned before can be utilized to interface uh, either that handheld controller that you had mentioned or another synthesizer into a computer and you can write straight onto the screen. And transpose and do other things. You and don't have to sit down and hand write out the notes or anything. No more, no more transcribing. And then you can print it on a dot matrix printer. Hey, that's great. It takes a lot of work out of it, doesn't it? So yes. I guess you could even uh, be. I used we used to call it jamming, where you're just playing the whatever you felt like. Right. You could play that right into music then, right? Yes. And then the sequencer within the computer can send the information back and play what you just played. Gee, that's that's really great. I, of course, I'm. Uh, I'm not a musician, so I love it. But now, you, what would you term your music? Do you call it rock? Do you call it uh, well? What, what's your term for it? I would say progressive rock. It's, it's it has a commercial flavor to it. We're in mainstream sound of rock. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to categorize it. Maybe we, maybe we try to have it. our own sound. Yeah. I guess I, I ever ever group uh, tries to have their own sound. That's so they'll be unique. Now, how, ma how many is in your group? Now, there's just two of you here tonight. But how Six many? of us. Six of us. So they couldn't make it tonight for whatever reason. What all instruments are played? We have a lead vocalist uh, who's also on violin, uh, bass guitar. Uh, we have two, key two keyboard players, percussion, and uh, as I think I mentioned, bass, and then also our guitarist. But the lead singer also plays not only violin, but sax, flute, and keyboards. Extremely versatile. Very, you got a multitude of sin there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, are, are you appearing any place right now? No. Are you going to be? We hope to be. So uh, 
the next thing on your agenda then is your 45. Uh, uh, have you started on it yet? We have. The first side's been recorded uh, in its final, pretty much in its final form, and we're beginning to work on the second side. Uh, again, we're very keen about a performance, but like I think a lot of bands start with a, a performance that's very good, and they've, de they've developed their material this way, and then they go in and hire, <coughs> excuse me, professional recording time. Mm -hmm. We're doing it the opposite way. Uh, recording time, if you go into a pro uh, professional studio, is extremely expensive, is Horrendous. it not? Is there, any, is there a good uh, professional <coughs> recording studio here in Kansas City? Many of them. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, uh, I know some videos, but uh, I mean, not yeah, you know, the video production, but as far as uh, recordings uh, of sound, I was not aware that there was any good ones here in town. We have first rate, uh, I would say first rate studios, and I would say more than just one. So I'm surprised that uh, we don't get some here from uh, other parts of the country to record. Uh, well, that may happen. Yeah. I think someday there have been a number of uh, what I would consider very, very uh, successful and popular bands that have come out of Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of jazz came out of here. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, just one quick question: uh, Are you going to have a, a director for your? Are you going to direct your own uh, musical video? Like it's going to be a little more difficult this time. <laughs> uh, the the only thing I would say uh, through my affiliation with American Cable Vision as a as a volunteer. Uh, the other aspect that I, I really cannot overstate is the fellowship and the meeting of other individuals, talented individuals that, that can do a lot of the things that I did in the productions, uh, the other, well, the first one that's already been seen, music okay. video. Okay, we're running out of time. Glad to have you both here. We're going to end up the show with a song, uh, music and lyrics written by Steve Rabb. Did I pronounce his yes. name right? The name of the song is I Want to See You, and we'll cut right to it right now, and otherwise... Good night, and we'll see you next week. I want to see you. I need to see you today. I want to see you, darling. I want to see you. I want to feel you beside me. I want to love you, darling You got me running around This crazy little town You got me feeling like I don't know which way's up or down Up or down You got me running around Asking everyone where you can be found I need to feel you beside me.